Hey guys and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. Today we're going to be talking about iBook G4 once again. As you can see I've changed the operating system, it's now macOS Tiger instead of Leopard. In the previous video I was just basically saying that macOS Leopard, it seems like it's good. I mean I, I definitely like uh, macOS Leopard and macOS Snow Leopard, but Tiger is the best one for the G4 I think. It consumes much less resources and I mean the main the main plus the main bonus is that basically I can run macOS 9 applications. I can just basically start classic right here and it's gonna launch all my macOS 9 apps without any problem. It can still run 10.4 Fox which means I can run the like latest web browser I mean not the latest web browser but like Firefox compiled for this platform. Another point that I like about the macOS Tiger is that basically it still allows me to run Mac ports. Basically Mac ports is an application that allows me to install utilities, packages and everything like that on the platform. So I mean it's still not limited in that sense. So I can have a web browser, I can have VLC media player, I can have Mac ports to install utilities, I can have Mac OS 9 applications and games, I can I can even just basically run a Mac OS 10 games as well here. So it's just like the best of both worlds. Unfortunately I cannot run Mac OS 9 natively here as compared to my iMac G4, but Still, I mean, I think it's good enough. It's good enough because it allows me to run the classic environment and it basically it definitely fits the bill. But guys, today I actually wanted to run different distros, different distros, different operating systems on this computer. So basically, for example, I can run Morph OS, I can run Mac Ubuntu Remix, I can run NetBSD, I can run what's that void Linux I can also run Debian 8 so let's actually go ahead and try all those operating systems on this computer how about we start with Debian 8 and thankfully this computer still has a CD DVD drive which means I don't need to like use flash drives and all that I can just like just use the CD drive which is really really cool all right so let's go ahead and restart the computer and we need to hold the C button to basically load from the CD DVD let's see how it works and as far as I know, this is like the latest one that runs on a G4 platform. Everything else was compiled for 64 bit, but this platform, guys, is still like 32 bit. So, well, yeah, it's different. All right, so welcome to Debian Linux. This is a Debian installation CD ROM built on 2018, which is good. Press enter to continue. Please wait, loading kernel. Let's see how it loads actually. All right, Linux is loading. Let's see. All right, so wait, this is like installation CD. I don't really want to install, guys. I wanted to try basically <laughs> I wanted to try like live CD live DVD I didn't want to install anything here on the hard drive I'm totally fine with Mac OS Tiger as of now well all right guys that's probably it I'm gonna eject the CD and try something different how about that how about we try Mac Ubuntu next this one oh wait actually like nice special effect right here this one should be good and as you can see I actually also written this thing in the Russian just to make sure like it should be like very cool <laughs> all right let me throw this away all right we're gonna repeat the procedure I'm gonna hold down the C and it actually should load something let's see this one should actually have like live CD live DVD kind of environment and we should be able to try it out somehow I guess I hope okay so default option is live well let's just type live and this guys is like an official build uh, of Lubuntu 12.04 which somebody just compiled, just updated with the recent stuff and all that. So, well, it should be working fine, I guess. And I should be able to install it on the hard drive if I want to. All right, guys, so Lubuntu loaded. And as you can see, it actually looks and feels like something like a Mac OS Tiger or Mac OS Leopard. And it's like really, really interesting in that kind of sense. So it just somebody just basically modified the stuff that it looks like the Somebody just basically modified the theme that it looks like it's a Mac OS, something like that, but of course it's just a Linux. And it's quite slow, I mean it's quite slow when just loading from the CD I should say. Probably it's much better on the USB thumb drive, but just for trying out stuff I think it's fine. Well, as you can see, I mean, yeah, it's kind of like that. Eh, come on, open up. So Bluefish Editor, Guinea. Uh, sound and video probably will be something like VLC. Yeah, VLC Audacity Audacity system tools 
and the, even all the icons you guys are like in Mac OS <laughs> it's modified like that and as you can see the RAM usage is not that high and this machine just has like 500 MB of RAM which is not a lot guys Wi-Fi actually works so Wi-Fi works here I already tried like browsing the web and basically it, it asked me for authentication key and it's totally fine it works I already tried that it's it's very very slow it's something similar that I saw in the Mac OS Tiger but I don't want to like show that kind of experience it's slow just trust me it's slow of course it has a pigeon messenger and all that I'm honestly not really sure what kind of usage you you can have for this kind of Linux distribution like yeah I mean it has more more or less recent uh, software but what's the difference basically have a Mac like why run Linux here I mean you have the old Mac which is capable of running Mac OS 9 like why you want to run Linux here I still don't get it but many people do so I cannot blame them, them for that so yeah it's totally up to you if what you want to run on your system so this guys is just a typical Linux distro you can adapt to it you can basically use it but I would not recommend it like personally because I as I said I personally prefer running Mac OS 10 Tiger and Mac OS 9 just like a best combo for this machine but let's try other operating systems as well next one we're gonna try is gonna be NetBSD guys so NetBSD is gonna be the next one I don't know guys for some reason it doesn't even detect the CD with NetBSD so it doesn't really work I don't know why so let's eject this one and try something different one of the best options to run on this computer on, on uh, iBook G4 on basically G4 processors is uh, Morph OS unfortunately this is not free it costs like 70 bucks guys I'm not sure why they charge so much for that one I don't know why because probably like like G4 platform, G5 platform, G3 platform is like very very specific. So guys, Morph OS is basically something that is actually supported by the team because it has like a paid version. Otherwise, the free version is like 30 minutes, you can run it and then it slows down and something like that happens. So basically, let's try this one out. Alright, let's start it. This one actually loaded, I'm sure, because I already tried it before, so let's see how it works out. Very nice logo, by the way, very nice. PowerBook 6.5, 1.3 MHz and 400 MB of RAM. That's what it says down below, so you exactly know what's happening. And as you can see, it's quite fast. I mean, the boot is really, really faster compared to Ubuntu, let's say. It's really faster. The interface is nice, fluid, the scroll bars and all that. I actually like it. I actually like it a lot, guys. So how about we just gonna pick the preferred language is gonna be English. And then let's see. So that's how it is, guys. We can actually check out the release notes, like right here. It even has some kind of sound here. Lots of stuff here. Let's see. First of all, this menu bar reminds you of something like early days of the Linux, right? Mate kind of environment. But I mean, it's not Linux. It's not based on Linux. It's totally different operating system. Clicking here doesn't work. Uh, but we can open this one. My Morph OS. How about that? Expanding by double click doesn't work here for some reason. I don't know why, guys. It shows my Mac OS drive right here. Morph OS boot. I think it shows like applications here. You can open applications. But first of all, when you open it, you have no idea which application does what. So basically, I think this one is a web browser, OWB, and you can open it right here. It reminds you of something like Safari. Or like that but it's not safari it's some like a uh, different browser totally reminds me of safari icon so for some reason it needs to initialize fonts first let's see so the sound works adjusting the brightness also works fine all the stuff seems to be working correctly for the most part i have not used it extensively guys but as you can see it's quite nice how much time it's actually gonna take to load the browser i don't know all right so it loaded i did save a browser so owb it would be nice if they just call this Odyssey web browser or something like that. And I already tried connecting this one to internet because I connected the cable and it worked. Not really sure about Wi-Fi because it doesn't display the Wi-Fi icon right here. So I cannot say for sure, but the cable actually worked. What else? I'm not really sure about all those icons right here. It's a bit confusing. Like this one, I think it just controls like overlay. If it overlaps the other windows or not, so you basically can control it like that. This one is like, I don't know, minimizing it like that, but you cannot maximize by double clicking so it's like uh, really strange this one should be like a menu bar i guess but no it's not so it's like mui settings and what you can control from here okay just basically mui settings for a save a browser and it's not really specific for the browser just like i don't know guys about this how to get to the settings of the browser i don't know i have no idea so it takes some time guys to get used to this operating system it's different it's very different from what i used before and for example it has a pdf reader benchmark utility 
lock tool, LCD monitor test, but I don't really know if you care about all that kind of stuff. Sketch, uh, I'm not really sure about this one. Paint for Morpho S, basically. Yeah, sure, want to quit? Yes. Then the next one is gonna be Cryptos. Probably for crypting some stuff, I guess. For like crypting the hard drive. I don't know, guys. Let's go up. Remote Shell, well, basically that says everything. Jalapeno, or what is that? Probably for burning CDs. Yeah, this one looks like a DVD CD burner, which is cool. Nice, simple. I mean, not really many people care about that those days, but iMac G4 users probably do. Scandal, this one probably is like a utility to scan something using your scanner, right? Yep, you can connect the scanner and scan stuff. That's okay, I guess, for the most part, but what else? Uh, remote shells, kind of showcase, synergy, synergy, I'm not sure what about this client, server, mm, don't really know. Oh, this one like just scans the CD and you can basically rip tracks, I guess, which is cool, but you can have iTunes to do the same thing, guys. I don't know why would you <laughs> want to use that one. I don't know, lock tool, showcase, what is that? Basically the image browser, I guess, for the most part, RAM disk. Yeah, basically you can just copy the stuff here, it's gonna be preserved until you shut down the PC, I guess, which is nice, but there's not much memory available for this kind of computer anyway, so I don't know. How about the customization stuff? How about to open the right click? Eh, I, can, I cannot right click without the mouse here. Like how to actually right click without the external mouse here, guys? I don't know. There's no way to do that. <laughs> but I mean, you can customize it, I guess, here. What I think about this operating system, I'm not really sure, guys, how many apps available for this one, but I know it's quite related to Amiga OS, so there should be some kind of compatibility with that. I cannot say conclusion here because I have not used it that much to make a conclusion. But from what I can say, it's nice fast operating system, I just cannot really find the use for this one on this specific machine. I just don't really find any use for that. In my opinion, Mac OS is better here. It feels better, just like more like uh, interesting, compatible and like much more software available. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. How about we try something else, like Void Linux guys here. Yeah, MorphOS is nice and I would prefer to install that one comparing to whatever else I've tried. I mean, I don't need Linux on my G4 because, I don't know, there is nothing specific about Linux. I can install it on Intel hardware as well, right? But I've also had the good reviews about Void Linux, so maybe let's try this one. If it even boots, I'm not sure if it boots. Alright, so welcome to Grab, Error, Unrecognized Number, blah blah blah. To continue booting, type Mac boot. To shut down, shut down. Guys, this is the open firmware and like by booting to this CD, something didn't really work out. So it doesn't really detect stuff here. But I mean, what if I try like live here? Uh, I guess, yeah, that's not what I want. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. So open firmware doesn't seem to like this specific CD, like the Void Linux one. So I'm gonna type Mac boot to continue booting. All right, guys, so I'm just loading the Mac OS back because, as I said, this is my preferable platform on Mac G4 and like on Macs in general. I buy Macs to run Mac OS based systems, even on the older Macs, because I don't know, that's just me. I would want to install like Linux on Intel system because Intel system is very, very open in terms of like what stuff you can install there. But I mean, in terms of G4, if it's not Mac, I'm probably gonna install the Morph OS here because at least it has some kind of interesting value. It's like, it's something like different from what I saw before. Everything else is just pretty much the same what you can try on your typical uh, machine, typical PC, typical uh, Intel Mac or whatever. So my preferable choice is Mac OS Tiger. That's probably not gonna change. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for more, there'll be more videos and see you soon soon guys I mean it's pretty exciting I'm pretty excited about this uh, iBook G4 it's nice the only thing I don't like about G4 is basically this one is like 32 bit which means not everything for PowerPC platform not even not even all the Linux users I have available here some stuff is not really available and there's a lot of interesting stuff I could try but I cannot because this one is just like 32 bit architecture which is disappointing but at the same time as I said my primary reason why I bought this one was running Mac OS Tiger and Mac OS 9 as I said like many many times already. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for more. There will be more interesting, exciting videos, including about the PowerPC platform. Alright guys, and uh, thank you.